Madam President of Antioch University, Santa Barbara, I really am deeply honored to officiate at each graduation ceremony. As you know, Antioch University, Santa Barbara, has been a part of the intellectual and cultural history of Santa Barbara for almost 35 years. And that history includes more than 3,800 illustrious alumni, a group that you will become part of today. Throughout my first year as president, my role has become increasingly external, much more so than it was in my first year. And I have been spending extensive time out in the community developing collaborative relationships and growing the future security of our campus by increasing community awareness and visibility among philanthropic individuals and foundations who will assist us with the development of alternative sources of revenue for scholarship programs, new programs that are responsive and relevant to students in the future, and as you all know right now, we're in the middle of a capital campaign, or the beginnings of a capital campaign, that will allow us to complete and fully develop our beautiful new campus at the corner of Anacap and Coast. Today, you are probably experiencing a range of emotions, exhilaration and exhaustion among them. You are probably looking back at the beginning, perhaps the beginning of your Antioch education, or even further to the beginning of your education or other commencement ceremonies. You, like other students before you, didn't come to Antioch University to be transformed by your education. Instead, you probably came here because in one way or another, you wanted to make a difference. Being out in the community as much as I am now, I talked to many of our alumni and what I hear from them, actually, is that indeed they were transformed by their Antioch education. That is a wonderful legacy that the Antioch experience has uniquely and consistently given our students. A chance to transform themselves and to go out into the community and enter professions and careers that allow them to make a difference and lead lives of purpose. We are proud of the accomplishments you celebrate today, and we know that you have made sacri many sacrifices to get here. Many of you have taken loans to complete the degrees you received today. Some of you are the first in your extended family to receive an undergraduate or graduate degree. Some of you have completed your degrees not only caring for yourself and your own children, but many of you have cared for elderly parents and relatives as well. All of you worked hard and you deserve the celebration that will follow today in the company of your family, friends, and the entire Antioch community. The faculty, staff, and administration, all of whom are gathered here today, are here to honor you. In looking for some inspirational words to share with you today, and as you've already heard, people look for inspirational words to share with graduates. That's sort of what you do when you give a speech to graduates. I did what you probably have done many times in order to get where you are today. I did some research. There are a lot of inspirational quotes out there on the inter internet, and boy, that wasn't so when I was in college. I, like you today, thought back to when I started college, and actually farther, because the differences in how we look things up today made me think about something my high school guidance counselor once told me. Now let me preface that by telling you that I grew up in the 1950s and 60s. I know I look much It was the fifth. And it was a very different time. And it was different for women. My mother was a high school physiology teacher, which at the time in itself was a rather unique role for women. Women were teachers, of course, but they were not science and math teachers. 
Despite the fact that my mother was teaching science, she never told me that I could do anything I wanted. Instead, she told me I could be a nurse, not a doctor. She told me that I could be a teacher, but if I chose to be a teacher, it was in order that I, like her, would have something to fall back on should something happen to my husband. She told me that I would marry my future, not make it. But back to my high school guidance counselor. What did he tell me? Well, he told me that I wasn't college material. I can honestly tell you that when he said that, my ears felt plugged up, my head felt weird, my heart started beating like out of my chest. I didn't know what the sensations meant. I was 16 years old. But I knew I wanted to go to college. I had no idea what I wanted to be. I was one of those late bloomers. If I had listened to his voice, however, I would be living today even today, all these years later, with the results of what he thought I was capable of. Don't waste your life living someone else's beliefs about what you are capable of. The time we... The time we all have here to do something meaningful is limited. My grandmother, who was Russian, used to say that if, and I'm going to try to do justice to my grandmother's Russian accent here, and I'm going to screw it up, but according to my grandmother, you will be too soon old and too late smart. <laughs> So don't waste that time living a life you didn't choose. And don't let someone else's voice, like that of my high school counselor, mean that other voices aren't heard. The ones that tell you that you can do it. Continue doing what you have done to get here, where you are going to stand today, following your own dreams and aspirations. If I had listened to the words and voice of my high school counselor, I would not have taken any of the paths that presented themselves to me or that I forged. After today, it's time for you to take the next path, whatever that path will be. But you must not let anything divert you from the path. Not everything you will do will be perfect. I started this ceremony not very perfect. <laughs> you will make many mistakes, so get over it. <laughs> Keep in mind that you don't really learn from your successes. You do indeed learn from your mistakes. And because everyone makes mistakes, there's a lot of learning out there available for you to observe. <laughs> like what I did today, right? Next time when you give a graduation speech, remember to do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Don't be afraid to take those paths. Keep in mind some advice I once heard from a very wise 800-year-old Jedi master. <laughs> mind what you have learned. Save you, it can. Thank you.